The business community regarded Roosevelt and the Roosevelt administration with the utmost suspicion, verging on dislike. And here was uh, a financier, wealthy in his own right, uh, who had come in with Herbert Hoover, who was willing to be and continued to be the bridge to the financial community. Roosevelt named Jones chairman of the RFC and gave him the go-ahead to take the RFC into battle. Neither man knew at the beginning how extraordinarily effective their collaboration would be, nor how bitterly it would end. As a banker and a businessman, Jesse Jones believed there was one chief obstacle to recovery, a lack of credit. And Jesse Jones understood credit as well as anyone in America. Bankers were hoarding their cash reserves, too frightened to make loans. But Jones realized that more credit, not less, was needed. He proposed a solution that traditional bankers considered far too extreme, that the federal government buy stock in banks through the RFC, in effect becoming part owner of the nation's banks while infusing them with a new supply of cash to lend. And that was a venture of government into the private sector beyond anything that uh, Hoover, the Republicans, or most conservative Democrats would previously have tolerated. It was a radical innovation. Some saw it as a dangerous step. This is the perfect example of socialism at work. Uh, the, the, the government moving into the means of production and distribution uh, and actually putting its money in it, receiving profits back to the government from that stock, exercising stockholders' voting rights, uh, which Jones did sometimes. Okay? You're not going to find a greater example of of socialism uh, in American history than that. Though it may have looked that way to Wall Street, to Jones it was simply good business. And the RFC was taking a lead role in the historic shift of financial power from New York to Washington. The fact that bankers were reliant on Washington, in some cases, for their very existence, for their continued existence, that serves as a very potent reminder that the, the world has changed, that uh, Washington no longer comes hat in hand to New York, but the New York banking system is coming down to Washington to negotiate its very survival, and Jones is right in the middle of that process. As conditions improved, the banks bought back their stocks, and all of the federal government's money was returned with interest. His zealous attention to the bottom line set Jones apart from most New Dealers, many of whom believed the solution to the Depression was to spend government money as liberally as possible. Jones held a far more conservative view. Even so, he used the clout of the RFC to make American businesses more accountable, especially when it came to the railroads. Railroads were the nation's biggest industry, but by 1933, one-third of them were bankrupt and the rest were on the brink. The nation's primary transportation system was about to grind to a halt. Jones rose to the challenge. The RFC made huge loans to dozens of railroads. But Jesse Jones had some firm ideas about how businessmen asking for government help ought to act. Where do you live? Jones asked the chief executives of one huge line. New York City, they replied. He pointed out that the closest their railroad got to New York was New Orleans and told the men to move south where they wouldn't get their government loan. You live too far from your tracks, he said. He didn't stop there. Some of the railroad men asking for government help earned more than $100,000 a year, a million in today's dollars. So when the Southern Pacific asked for a loan, Jones said yes, as long as their executives cut their salaries in half and used the money instead to rehire workers and improve the rail lines.
suddenly he is the most powerful person in the world financial community. And they had to come to his office sometimes hat in hand. And uh, uh, he was not above um, pulling their strings every now and then <laughs> to kind of let them know that, uh, uh, that mm, times were changing. Mm. Going against the grain of his fellow businessmen, Jones told American capitalists more than once that partnership with the government was the key to their survival. It was Jesse Jones who made the transition to an enormously important role for government. And being himself a successful financier, successful banker, himself having money, unlike many of the new of the other New Dealers, uh, he gave a respectability, a credibility to it. But Jesse Jones' concept of an activist government did not go as far as many New Dealers wanted. From the first days of the New Deal, he butted heads in particular with Henry Wallace, the Secretary of Agriculture. Well, Wallace and Jones, I think you can say, represented the clash between the pragmatists and the idealists. Jones was a pragmatist. He was a can-do fellow. Uh, Wallace uh, was a dreamer, an idealist. Uh, he wanted to remake America. The government's response to plunging farm prices brought their two philosophies into sharp relief. Mr. Wallace, from Mr. Jones's viewpoint, was a little bit wild. Uh, Mr. Wallace, at one point, recommended that the farmers plow under the third row as a way of reducing the supply of uh, food. They're plowing up cotton instead of picking it down Dixie Way as a part of President Roosevelt's stupendous program to stop excessive production and boost prices. Mr. Jones thought that this was a harebrained uh, scheme. Jones proposed a different solution. Instead of destroying surplus farm crops, he loaned farmers money and stored their crops as collateral. That took the farm goods off the saturated market and put money in the desperate farmers' hands. When prices rose, farmers sold the warehouse crops and paid back the government loans with interest. Jones' clever use of credit was getting the wheels of the American economy moving again. The RFC was becoming one of the most potent institutions in the nation. By 1938, every corner of the United States had been touched by RFC activities. RFC loans built a huge aqueduct to bring water across the desert to Los Angeles. This 18-mile tunnel costing $220 million is being financed by the RFC. I have inspected the property today in the work, and I am well pleased with it. RFC funds brought electricity and appliances to homes never before within the reach of power lines. Jesse Jones is not just uh, loaning billions of dollars to thousands of banks around the country. He's also financing the purchase of water pumps, toasters, and washing machines in rural villages and distant farmhouses throughout America. The RFC provided capital to build the Bay Bridge across San Francisco Bay, one of the longest bridges in the world. His vast and growing empire did not go unnoticed. The Saturday Evening Post magazine reported, next to the president, no man in the government, and probably in the United States, wields greater power. <laughs> 